Live from our studio in Washington, this is Special Report. We hear stories every day about how tough it is for some people to find any job, let alone a good one. Tonight's senior national correspondent John Roberts tells us there are actually a lot of really good jobs out there that employers say they can't fill fast enough. Our problem right now is we're growing like crazy. In this brutal jobs market, how often do you hear that? At Gentex Manufacturing, in Michigan of all places, the help wanted sign has been out for a year, trying to fill more than 200 jobs. Our problem is finding people that are qualified to work in this environment. Across Lake Michigan, at Wisconsin's MGS Manufacturing, same story. They have more than 30 positions open. We can't find people to fill the jobs. Both companies have found explosive growth in high-tech manufacturing. MGS makes injection molded plastics. Gentex is the world's number one supplier of ultra sophisticated rear view mirrors for cars. Why can't they find people to fill jobs? I think part of it is the mindset on manufacturing. I think people grow up and when you go home and talk to mom and dad and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to go work in manufacturing, they're kind of going, oh, geez, you couldn't find a real job uh, somewhere. You might be asking yourself, how many companies in America could possibly be having a difficult time filling jobs? Well, of According to the Manpower Group, more than half, 52%, can't find people for mission-critical positions. And the problem is worse here in the United States than in any other major industrialized country in the world. Manpower found some of the consistently most difficult to fill jobs are skilled trades, engineers, machinists, and machine operators. Back when I was growing up, it was told if you didn't go to university or college, you're never going to make anything of yourself. Well, what we've done is we're paying the price for being a little melodramatic during those times. Well, how difficult is it to find people of this skill level? Very difficult. So difficult that if we came across the right candidate, whether we had an opening or not, we would take them. Companies can train some people for lower end jobs, but the new high level skills can only come through education or apprenticeships. For those who have them, employment is no problem. Among graduates from Wisconsin's Waukesha County Technical College, instead of 10 people vying for every job, it's the other way around. We had over 500 openings in machining and tool and die last year and we probably had 20 to 40 people that graduated from our programs. The onus of keeping jobs at home lies on us as well as it does the educational system. MGS has partnered with Waukesha and other colleges to develop talent. It expects to hire a hundred more workers in the next year. Its goal? To beat China at its own game and restore pride to American manufacturing. We will kick 100 percent of your ass. We will, <laughs> we will go out of our way to deliver the goods. Gentex plans to add nearly 2,000 jobs in the next five years and will need everything from technical college grads to those with a four-year engineering degree. We're creating intellectual property and products that nobody else is doing anywhere in the world. And that's, the, that's how we want to compete. There have been warnings for 20 years about a looming shortage of skilled labor. But the problem is only getting worse. And the fewer people there are to fill high-tech jobs, the bigger the drag on production and ultimately the economy. Bringing that honor and bringing that self-esteem back into manufacturing is what our president should be talking about, leaders should be talking about, and we should be training for. Yeah, there's a real risk to these companies that can't fill these jobs. They thrive on innovation and imagination, doing things that no one else in the world can, or doing them in a way that no one else can replicate. If they can't fill the jobs, if they can't expand, if they can't meet demand, they may miss opportunities. And in doing so, Shannon, open the door for foreign competition to knock them off. All right, John Roberts in Atlanta. Thank you, John.